Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to our Mount Carey Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I will be teaching a lesson this morning and I'm Deacon Faison. Daniel Faison, that is. Let us pray. Gracious is eternal heaven, Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for waking us this morning and being in our clothes and our right mind and having our health and strength and active to our our limbs, O oh Lord. So we ask you to bless now, physical and mentally and spiritually, our minds, O oh God, that it will be able to bring forth the message that you have prepared for today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. A lesson today is no place like it. And with a subject like that, you would like to, I guess you would like to ask the question, what is it? Place like it. And so we are talking today about the new Jerusalem, which John saw. And we are going to be reading from Revelation verses 10 through 21 and a, <clears throat> a key verse for today is and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Revelation 21 and 14. So let us begin our lesson. Have you ever really thought about what heaven is like in your mind? There are some people who say that I, I'm living in heaven now. I have all that I desire right here on earth. And I wonder if they have really thought what heaven might be like. Or if they have heaven here on earth. Evidently they don't worry about dying. Dying and uh, judgment. And then the new city, New Jerusalem. But me, myself, since I'm aging, I sometimes think about heaven. And I think of it as being like no other place that I've ever seen or ever visited. But some place especially that God has prepared for me and for those of us who love and trust in Jesus Christ. And I know that in order to get to this place, I have to go through Jesus Christ. So denying him will not give me an opportunity to enter into the New Jerusalem. So I'm going to begin to read it. And he carried me away in the spirit to a quiet and high place and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. And one might wonder who were they talking about when they said, and they carried me. And, and the ninth verse of this chapter said that it was an angel that carried a veil that had been showed John the judgment in the beginning of Revelation. And now he's taking him to his last judgment. I mean to the last vision. And that is the New Jerusalem. And as he takes him there, he's shown him this whole holy city. And John is up on this high mountain, great and high mountain. And he is seeing this city come down from heaven. Having the glory of God and her light was likened to her stone, most precious, even the just stone, clear as crystal. And he had a great and high and had 12 gates. And at the, the gates, 12 angels. And the names were written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And my mind wonders what John, how the Spirit was leading John, and what he was seeing. And John saw this great city coming down from heaven. And it was like the jasper stone, which was clear as 
Christian. And I wonder, how is it that it was so clear and he was looking from a distance and it was because of the spirit that the angel had put him in that he was able to see this place so clearly. And the walls were great and high and had 12 gates. And the gates, 12 gates, and the gates, 12 angels and names were written thereon. <clears throat> the children of Israel. And these 12 gates had the names of the, tri the tribes of Judah. Judah. Which were Reuben's, Jacob, which was Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah, and the list goes on until it gets up to the 12. And on the east, three gates. On the north, three gates on the south. Three gates on the west. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them was written the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And we know the 12 apostles of the Lamb was the ones who, who Jesus chose to be his disciples. And we are just mentioning a couple of those that were Peter, James, and John, and of course, Mark, Matthew, and all down the line. <clears throat> Now the dimensions of the wall is the next step that we're going to take. He's seen this great city coming down now. He's going to describe the city unto you. Verse 17. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. And he had that talk with me, had a golden weed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. And the city lie four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and breadth and the height were all equal. So, <clears throat> Here, he tells us the measurement of the city, the gates, and the walls thereof. And first, <clears throat> I'm sorry for my voice is leaving me this morning. And the city lies four square, and the length of it larger is the breadth. And the measurement of the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, length and the breadth and the height that are all equal. So this was like a big square coming down out of the heaven. And and I uh, was looking this up in, in another version, thank you. And it said that this was 72 yards. And 72 yards equal 2,592 inches. And you, and you divide that by 12 inches and you get 216 feet. So that's how tall the walls were. And that, <coughs> and, <coughs> and verse 18, and the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundation of the wall of the city was garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first stone was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chastelon, the fourth the emerald, the fifth sardius, the sixth sardius, 
I mean the fifth, Sidonia, and the sixth, Sardius, the seventh, Chrysolite, and the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, Topaz, the tenth, Chrysostomus, the eleventh, Ajacin, and the twelfth, an Amory. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every gate was one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. The material of the wall was jasper. The city was gold, and it was clear. The walls were 216 feet high. The foundation was every kind of precious stone. Can you imagine looking at a foundation and you see all of these pretty stones in it that has been named so far? Now the New Jerusalem here is so precious that it's something that no one has ever seen before, or even a likeness to do. And we can tell that by the, by the dimensions of the building and also the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, foundation, how it was built. And the only foundation that they had all these precious stones and the, and the names of the stones. And then it gets to the gates and it says that the gates were one single pearl. One single pearl. Can you imagine a pearl being so big? Just one. And these gates were all around the square. As it was full state. Three gates in the east, three gates in the west, three gates in the north, three making the 12 gates to the city. <clears throat> now, as we know that this was the final vision of John, showing us the great city of New Jerusalem. The city coming down from heaven. And then how it was made, how the foundation was laid, and how the stones were named, how the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Jacob was mentioned, the apostles were mentioned, and then we get to the part where, where all that is seen is just beautiful light, the light of God and Jesus. It had no darkness, just light. There was no need for the sun, the moon, other stars. Because Jesus and God illuminated the whole place. There was no temple in this place because we were in the temple of God and Jesus. We were in the temple. The Holy of Holies we were looking into. And it was as clear as crystal. There are many things that we can think of when we think of the New Jerusalem. We can think of the price that Christ had to pay here on earth when he came, that we might have the chance at, at life everlasting and to be able to visit that city and to remain there forever with Jesus and God. Because in it is where Jesus promised us that he would give us life everlasting. And there in this city 
everything belongs to God. Everybody have to give up their glory that they gain here on earth. Nations have to give up their power and their throne and all. It becomes everything belongs to God. And so therefore, when we see Jesus, and in that final day, we're looking to visit that great big city that has been described in the lesson today. The new Jerusalem that John saw coming down from heaven with great walls of height, with diamond and pearl gates, the streets are made of gold, and it is transparent, as clear as glass. And he was able to look into the city and see all the great things that was to take place. The place that God had prepared for us. And the gates never close. We are always open for those who will enter in. And only those that enter in are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So, you, we as Christians, have got to make sure that we try and love and be obedient to God, trusting and loving in His Word, doing unto others as we would have them do unto us, that we might enter into that great city, New Jerusalem, because Jesus has made the way for all who would accept him. And you would get a chance to visit this new Jerusalem, see it, and live there forever. Only people that won't make it are those who refuse and deny Christ as Lord and Savior. There were names that were mentioned sins that we know, four mothers, adulterers, and all of those sins that we are very well aware of were mentioned that they will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And there is a great reward for all, and we are looking for that, because our hope is in Jesus Christ, that he will be there to welcome us into that great city. I'm looking forward for that day that I'm not trying to die, I'm still trying to live. A life that is pleasing unto God. But knowing that in that day, I will get to see this city that is lit up by Jesus and God. Where it is not no cloudy spots, where there are no more tears, where there is no more sorrow, no more burdens and all that. Because it has all been wiped away once we walk through those gates. Thank God for his mercy that he has shown us. Thank God for his love that he loves us with every day. He loves everybody. And he gives us chance and opportunities every day of our lives to come to that great city that was shown to John the Revelator. Don't you want to go? Don't you have a desire to want to get into that city? That city that is filled with precious stones and gold and clarity so clear that you can just see through it. I love that John was on the outside but the Holy Spirit let him see everything on the inside. And on the inside was the, that lived it up was that of God and his son. Light bring. So, I invite you today to, if you don't know Jesus Christ, and God is your Savior and Lord. Get to know Him. Because there is coming a day when you will have to face the judgment. And then after the judgment, pass the judgment and you will enter into this great city, the New Jerusalem.
there are many aspects that could have been talked about in this lesson, but it would take too long to explain them one by one. So I just gave you an overview of what is to take place when John saw the New Jerusalem, knowing that there is no place like it, no place. So therefore, let's try to make it to that place that there's no place like it. God bless you. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for showing us the new Jerusalem, O Lord. And we are praying that you can give a life according to your will.